Secretary Hagel, uh, joins me right now. Thanks for doing this. I know that you've Thanks, been reluctant to criticize the president, and you haven't done a lot of interviews about this, but, but as much as you can tell me, what was in that memo in which, in which you expressed your concerns about how the administration was handling Syria? Jake, uh, thank you. Nice to see you again. Uh, let me begin this way. Uh, first, I think everyone understands uh, what we are up against uh, in the world today. Uh, ISIS and all the different elements of uh, terrorism and dynamics and historic differences and challenges and threats uh, is complicated. Let's start there and of understand that. Uh, there are no easy, simple solutions, regardless of some who uh, appear to have very glib, uh, and I think that was the president's point, uh, glib, uh, quick solutions. There are none. Uh, second, um, I, I always felt that uh, we needed to more clearly define our political strategy along with our military strategy, because it's my opinion, it certainly was the opinion of the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, Marty Dempsey, uh, he can speak for himself, but uh, it was our opinion that there is no military solution to this. We are up against an ideology, we are up against a reality of uh, dynamics, a set of dynamics we've never seen before, sophistication of social media, the military prowess, the tactical strategic prowess that ISIS uh, possesses, the, the funding. So we, we should more clearly define what is our political strategy? What are our priorities? Who is the enemy here? Is Assad the enemy, or is ISIS the enemy? Uh, do you think? Do you think that we should not have Assad as our designated enemy right now? We should focus on ISIS. Uh, well, uh, Assad is a very bad guy. Uh, there are bad guys all over the world, but uh, I think it's pretty clear that ISIS represents the real threat to our country, to the world. Uh, I said so 15 months ago in a. In a press in conference. Memo. Oh, in the press conference. Yeah, actually, in a press conference when I was asked about ISIS. And I said, this is a force we've never seen before uh, because they do represent all the dynamics that we have never confronted before a non state actor with tremendous abilities and power uh, and reach. Uh, Assad has to be dealt with, but you can't confuse your allies and your adversaries by saying, well, Assad must go uh, and we can't deal with him because he's lost legitimacy to rule and what he's done to his own people and we'll deal with him later but uh, we want you on the ground those opposition groups that we're funding and we're training and we're preparing just to go after ISIS because they don't see it quite that way the Turks don't see it quite that way right they want the to go. they have a lot of different uh, problems and pressures that uh, our subterranean religious uh, differences are, are What huge. was your concern when you wrote that memo to the, to the White House? My concern was, and by the way, I wasn't blaming anybody. Right. I was part of the National Security Council, is that we had not clearly defined our political strategy. First, uh, we need to help build a, a stability, a platform of stability, before we're going to be able to resolve anything. And we can keep killing people. We can keep playing a, a proxy war game and destroying the Middle East and seeing uh, the results of that, refugees uh, and other very uh, clear consequences of that kind of an effort. But the Russians have got to be part of this. I think the Iranians have to be part of it. So we need oh. to ally ourselves with Russia. Well, and it, isn't, it isn't alliance, Jake. It's let's seize on the common interest. What is the common threat to all, all of those countries? What's our common interest? Here? ISIS. You, you, ISIS. And you build around that. You build out then into the next series of steps of Assad and so on. I don't think you're going to find a resolution to Assad until you, f until you figure out how you're going to deal with ISIS and you bring the different uh, uh, groups, elements, countries, leaders together on some unification. We're going to have differences with Iran for years and years, with Russia for years, but, but you can't let those differences dictate or you can't become captive to the differences. Let's center uh, on, on, the, on the core threat, the common threat, build out from there. If you can build some platform of stability, that gets you to a point where you can start to maybe unravel some of this. All the countries of the Middle East are going to have to be part of this. Mm -hmm. We can't do it. The military can't do it. The U.S. can't do it. The Russians can't do it. Western Europeans can't do it. But what's happening here is it, it is, is completely out of control, and there's no prospect for bringing any kind of stability I think, on the path we're on now. And that, that was what I was talking about in the memo. Did it fall on deaf ears? Well, we had conversations about it. Uh, they disagreed. I, 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 I wouldn't 
put it that way. It's, as I said, it's difficult. It's, uh, it's one of these issues where there are differences of opinion. That was uh, my opinion. And I uh, Do you think that, that the current today, strategy to fight ISIS is working? Well, I think strategy in itself is, uh, is an element of this. But strategy, just like we did during World War II or any war, you're constantly adapting strategy. You're constantly adjusting to what's going on the other side. Now, remember, again, this is, a, this is an element of force we've never quite seen before. Mm -hmm. Then the other part of this is, Jake, you're dealing with uncontrollables that we cannot control. We certainly learned that from Iraq. Uh, these are dynamics completely outside our ability to, to change. So uh, when you say strategy, yes, we need a strategy. Yes, we need a, a, a clear policy. You say we need a strategy. It, we don't have a strategy or a clear policy well, right now? Well, no, we have a strategy. But, but, you're, but here's the point. Again, I go back. You're constantly adapting it and shifting it. But my point has been that we need to more clearly define the, the political strategy along that should lead the military strategy. Putting boots on the ground or special operations forces or the strikes. We started those strikes more than a year ago. And, and they are part of the strategy. They have to be part of the strategy. Building up the, the military capacity uh, with those who are, who are willing to help uh, in that area. Part of the strategy. But it has to, it, that has to be just part of the strategy. And that must come fr from a, a larger overview of what is the larger objective here. Right. I want to read something from Michael Vickers, who was the Undersecretary for Intelligence while you were Secretary of Defense. He wrote an op-ed in Politico saying the Obama strategy for defeating ISIS is not fast or forceful enough. Quote, by any measure, our strategy in Iraq and Syria is not succeeding or is not succeeding fast enough. We're playing a long game when a more rapid and disruptive strategy is required. Is he right? I think he is right. And uh, I have a immense respect for Mike Vickers. I worked with him when I was in the Senate, when I was co-chairman of the President's Intelligence Advisory Board. Um, we do need to accelerate this, but I, I think at the same time, uh, President Obama has been wise in, in, in what are, asking this question. What are we getting into? And every time you make a commitment to accelerate, right. uh, th then there are a series of questions that have to come with it. I think our foreign policy over the last many, many years uh, uh, has never ever really developed a series of then what happens, then what happens, then what happens. You take down uh, Saddam Hussein, well, who governs? Right. How are they chosen to govern? Who makes that decision? Those are tough, tough right, follow-on issues. second and third residual uh, issues. Yeah, and we don't, we don't do that very well. So I think Mike's uh, points are generally, uh, generally right. I want to ask you about um, the New York Times investigating uh, right now that there's an expanding inspector general investigation into whether the intelligence reports from Iraq and the Pentagon specifically were, were cooked, were finessed, to make it look as though the air campaign was doing better than it was and that ISIS was weaker than it is. Um, some of this would have happened while you were at the Pentagon. Do you know anything about it? What can you tell us? No, I don't know anything about it, uh, Jake. Uh, I think there's always, though, uh, and this isn't new, a conflict between uh, uh, our, our military on the ground versus different intelligence uh, groups. And by the way, we have to remember, there's more than just one intelligence group out there. We've got 16 independent intelligence agencies, and most of them reside in the Pentagon and, and uh, DOD. Uh, but there, there are various... Uh, uh, attitudes, perceptions. We've uh, seen this movie this. before, though. Policymakers finessing the intelligence yeah, to sure. make it something sure. that will please the boss. Do you think that happens with the Obama administration? Uh, I didn't see it, and I was alert to it. I was aware of it. Um, as you know, my history in the Senate, Jake, yeah. has been pretty critical on a lot of these things. So I, I was very careful about this. Now, that doesn't mean something couldn't happen uh, below the Secretary of Defense's. Uh, uh, office. Uh, you can't monitor uh, everything. There is conflict always. I know that. I ask a lot of questions. I know Chairman Dempsey always asks a lot of questions, but this particular issue, uh, I'm not aware of it, nor did that come up to me when I was Secretary of Defense. Former Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel, thanks so much for joining yeah. us. We really appreciate it. Don't be a stranger. Come Thank back more, thanks, please. Jake.